that a person does won't appear as one darkness, but they will take the form of many darknesses on the day of judgment. May Allah protect us. On that day where a person will need light and the glow and the light of Iman to move forward. And without that, a person will not be able to move forward. So that is the first thing. The second thing Nabi Ali Salam said, وَاتَّقُوا shuha. So I forgot to mention that in Arabic, the words for greed are tama, hirs, and shuh. These are three words and they're used interchangeably. So in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, وَاتَّقُوا shuha," That be careful about miserliness and greed. And again, what leads a person to becoming miserly or stingy? It is the greed. It is greed that a person has. So the Prophet ﷺ says, Beware of being miserly or beware of greed. Because it is this very same greed that destroyed the nations that, that came before you. The same greed is what causes bloodshed in this world. And that's why in many instances, wars are not caused because of, uh, because of other reasons. But many a times at the, very, you know, at the very center of the war or the feud, is, it is greed of wealth or resources, or money, or so forth and so on. So the Prophet ﷺ said that this very same greed led to bloodshed. And it led people to considering those things which are totally haram, which they knew to be wrong and haram also. So they knew that this is something forbidden. But a person, because of the greed and the intensity of the greed that a person has, a person wants to acquire that no matter what a person has to do. And sometimes a person starts thinking to themselves that the ends justify the means. Although the ends don't justify the means, right? So the ends don't justify the means, but a person starts thinking, well, you know what the ends, they justify the means. Which means that I want to acquire it and it makes no difference how I acquire it, whether it's by means that are allowed and permissible or whether it's means that are not allowed and that are not permissible. So this is in regards to greed that the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned. Now, those are the harms of greed on a, on a community level, that a person is unjust to other people. But what about on an individual level? What does greed do to an individual? We can understand that a person wants to acquire something that belongs to somebody else. Yes, there is greed that is there. But what does greed do to an individual? So, Rasulullah ﷺ said, and I share with you the hadith of Ka'ab bin Malik, ta'ala anhu, which is quoted in Tirmidhi, Ka'ab bin Malik ta'ala anhu says that the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا ذِئْبَانِ جَائِعَانِ أُرْسِلَ فِي غَنَمٍ That two hungry wolves that are set upon a flock of sheep. Now you can imagine, you got a flock of sheep and you got wolves. The only thing that the wolf wants to do is devour the sheep. Right? That is the focus of this animal. And subhanallah, sometimes it will wait for long periods of time and when the moment is right, it will take that one sheep and move away and it will devour that sheep. And it will continue to do that until it's achieved its goal. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in this hadith, which is an example, that مَا ذِئْبَانِ جَائِعَانِ أُرْسِلَ فِي غَنَمٍ That two hungry wolves that are set upon a herd of sheep بِأَفْسَدَ لَهَا مِنْ حِرْسِ الْمَرْءِ عَلَى الْمَالِ وَالشَّرَفِ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the harm that these two wolves would the harm that these two wolves will inflict on the flock of the sheep is not as severe as the harm that a person will inflict upon his deen because of the greed that a person has. So there's two greeds that are mentioned in this hadith. One is the greed that a person has for wealth. A person has, wealth for, a person has greed for wealth. And the second thing that is mentioned is that a person is looking for, so, for, for some social position. So whether it is respect in the eyes of the people and so forth and so on. So these are the two things that are mentioned in this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. So that is, the, that is the level of harm that greed will do to the deen of an individual. And again, it comes back to the point that I mentioned earlier. Why is greed so harmful to the deen of an individual? Greed, greed is extremely harmful because a person is not going to look at what is right, what is wrong. A person is not going to look at halal and haram. And not only that, like I said, this illness of greed is an overarching illness. So what does greed lead to? Number one, a person who is greedy is always discontent. A person who is greedy because they have this aspiration for more. So whatever they have is never enough for them. And that's why in Arabic, the word that is used for greed is tama. And tama is translated as 
translated as that this that this hunger for for something whether it is for wealth or social position or whatever it is the hunger that a person has that is never satiated you can never fulfill that hunger that a person has so number one the harms of greed is is that a person is always discontent you are never happy with what you have why because you're always aspiring for more and that is why the quotation which i started with earlier Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu He's the famous companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said he was giving his son advice And he gave three pieces of advice to his son So he said to his son Ya Bunayya He said oh my son And these are words of advice that the, the, the golden words of advice He said that Ya Bunayya Ida talabta al-ghina Fatlubhu bil-qana'ati Fa innahu malun la yinfad He said oh my son when you are looking for riches, when you are looking for ghina, ghina can be translated as, you know, uh, when a person is financially stable, a person is independent, a person is wealthy. So he said, when you are looking for this, you know, to become wealthy, then logic would say that, where do you look for that? Well, you look for that in wealth. Go and earn and acquire more wealth and more wealth and more wealth. And then what happens? You'll become independent and you will become, you'll become financially stable and free and, and, and all of those things. So instead of telling him, look for that in wealth, he says, فَطْلُبْهُ بِالْقَنَاعَةِ He says, and, and I translate this into two ways. He says, فَطْلُبْهُ بِالْقَنَاعَةِ Number one translation, he says, if you're looking for wealth, then look for that wealth in contentment. Look for the wealth in contentment. Why? فَإِنَّهَا مَالٌ لَا يَنْفَدْ He said, because contentment is a wealth that will never come to an end. When you are content with what you have, if you are happy with the distribution of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then yes, you will look for your risk. You will look to become wealthy. And again, it's not wrong for a person to be wealthy. It's not wrong for a person to have access. But it's when a person is always desiring for that access amount that then has a harmful effect on the deen of that person. So he said to him that when you're looking for this wealth in ghina, then look for it in contentment. So that because contentment will always keep a person happy. When a person is content, a person is happy. Number one. Number two, he said to his son, he said, He said, Oh my son, and be careful about this aspiration for wealth that doesn't come to an end. Be careful about being greedy. Why? He said, فَإِنَّهُ فَقْرٌ حَاضِرٌ He said, because the moment you become greedy, you are immediately poor. You are immediately poor. Why? Because you forget the blessings of Allah Ta'ala that surround you. You don't look at what you have because you're always focused on what you don't have. And that's why respected brothers and elders, Allah forgive us. But so many times we're busy complaining about the things we don't have and we totally ignore the things that we have. Right? I don't have this. I don't have this. He has this. She has this. He drives this and he's wearing this. So we're always looking at other people. I don't have it. This person has it. He has it. She has it and so forth and so on. And that is a lot of the times the discussion. Many a times. So we're so busy focused on what other people have that we tend to forget the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to a person. So Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas said to his son that Be careful about being greedy. Don't stretch an envious eye to another person for what they have. فَإِنَّهُ فَقْرٌ حَاضِرٌ Because that will put you in a position of immediate poverty. You are immediately poor when you don't recognize the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third piece of advice that, it, that he gave to his son was, he said, and he said, become despondent of what people have in their hands. Don't focus on too much on what people have. Like I was just saying a second ago, he has this and this person has this and so forth. He said, don't worry too much about what other people have. Because when you become despondent of people and what other people have, Allah makes you independent of those people. Don't bank your hopes too much on what people have. This person is going to do this for me and this person is going to do this for me. Even if you've done good to the person, do it for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. Don't do it with this intention that one day when I'm in need, they're going to return the favor. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that don't shower your favors upon the people so that they can reciprocate that. Of course, it's part of moral morality that when somebody is good to you, you do good back to them. When a person is in need and they've helped you, then it's only right that you help them at the time of need. But don't do it with that intention. Why? Because again, if you bank your hopes on people, they will desert you at the time of need. They will leave you abandoned. 
And so subhanallah, you will be disappointed. So what we were speaking about, we were saying that this illness of greed, number one, a person is discontent. A person is never happy with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to this person. Number two, what does greed lead to? It leads to jealousy. Hasad and jealousy is a result of greed, right? And like I said, that's why greed is like, is like an illness that leads to so many other things. So it leads to greed, it, it leads to jealousy. You're worried about what other people have. Why does that person have it? Again, forgetting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that gave it to that person. And that is why Allah Ta'ala gives us an ajib solution to that in the Quran. Allah Ta'ala says, Wala tatamannu ma faddalallahu bihi ba'dakum ala ba'd. Lirrijali nasibun min maktasabu wa lin nisa'i nasibun min maktasabna. Wasalullaha min fadlihi inna Allah kana bi kulli shayna alima. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, They don't desire for what, we, for what we, we have given to other people. Don't desire for what we have given to other people. We have given men and women different capacities, capabilities, strengths, beauty, so many other things that Allah Ta'ala has distributed. Allah is saying, I'm the one that gave it to people. I'm the one that gave it to that person. So Allah, sa Allah Ta'ala says that don't desire for that. Was'alullaha min fadli and ask Allah for His grace and His rahmah and His mercy. Why? Because Allah is the one that gave it to that person. So if you want it, then don't be jealous of that person. Rather turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave it to that person in the first place. إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا وَسَأَلُوا اللَّهَ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُلِّ شَيْنَ عَلِيمًا And Ajib Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, For indeed Allah knows everything. So when Allah has given somebody something and He hasn't given it to you, then there is a reason why Allah gave it to them and not to you. There is a reason why Allah gave it to them and not to you. And Allah knows best. Allah is telling us, إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُلِّ شَيْنَ عَلِيمًا Allah knows best. So don't become jealous of what other people have. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see somebody with something good, say, MashaAllah, tabarakallah. You see somebody with some blessing, whether it's external, or you see the person has some capability, some capacity Allah has given to them, you should praise the person and say, MashaAllah, tabarakallah. When you say, MashaAllah, tabarakallah, you're praising the person, and subhanAllah, you will, inshaAllah, protect that person from nadar and evil eye, inshaAllah. So that's the second thing. What we were speaking about, we were speaking about the harms that greed creates. So that is the second thing. That greed creates jealousy in the heart of the person. Number three, what does greed create? Greed creates dishonesty in the person. Dishonesty in the person. And like we were just speaking about earlier, when a person is greedy, then they're not worried, they're not looking whether he's acquiring this through halal or whether a person is acquiring that through haram. And at this moment, there's one hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is mentioned, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said, Inna Allah ta'ala, inna Jibreel amin, inna ruh al-amin, nafatha fi raw'i, ala inna nafsan, lan tamuta, hatta tastakmila rizqaha, fattakullaha wa ajmilu fi talab, wa tawakkalu alayhi. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said, that's the first portion of the hadith, he said alayhi salatu wa sallam, Jibreel alayhi salatu wa sallam, he inspired me with wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that listen carefully, nobody will die until they have finished their last morsel. Nobody can die until they have finished up until the last morsel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written and destined for that person. You cannot die. What Allah has written for a person to acquire, a person is going to get that. Fattakullah. So fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ajmilu fi talab and seek the rizq and sustenance of Allah in the most beautiful way. Meaning, seek that through means that are halal. Don't look for that rizq through means that are haram. And going forward in the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that for indeed, if Allah has delayed something for you, you cannot acquire it, you cannot acquire it before the time that Allah Ta'ala has written it for you. So even if you seek something through haram, you know, you seek something through fraud, you seek something through lying, and you think that I'm going to get rich quick, you know, get rich quick. You know, why do you think, subhanAllah, so many people fall prey to Ponzi schemes? Why? You know, it's tried and tested. People have lost millions upon millions. But why do they fall prey to that? Why? Because get rich quick, you know. Make, you know, we're going to make some money real quick. A person is lured into these types of things because of the greed. And subhanAllah, a person is not thinking straight, not able to make right financial decisions, not consulting the right people, and so forth and so on. SubhanAllah, greed blinds a person. It blinds a person. The person doesn't recognize anymore that, yeah, I you know what, I wasn't, I'm not being honest here, so maybe I shouldn't take that or whatever the case is. And if we start speaking about the incidents from the life of our pious, how careful they used to be. And anytime they feared, you know, let alone feared haram, 
when they had the fear of doubt, when they had the fear of doubt, even then they would abstain from that out of fear that it's going to affect my deen. It's going to affect my connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those are a few things in regards to the importance of abstaining from greed. And how does a person abstain from greed? Those are the harms of greed. I apologize. Those are the harms of greed. Now the question is, is that how does a person cure themselves from this greed that a person has? Let me, let me, let me mention one thing. Intrinsically, every human being has, has greed. Every, every human being has muhabbat or you can say the love of wealth. Allah says that man you know, loves wealth. And not only does he love wealth, he's overzealous about this wealth. right? So there's this uh, extreme want for wealth that a person has. But again, if it's not checked with, is it in line with the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And if a person is not questioning themselves, that why am I acquiring it? After acquiring it, what am I going to do with that? Am I going to use it on the family? Am I going to give it in sadaqah and charity? Am I looking to build a masjid? What is it that I want to acquire this wealth for? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah protect us, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran about those people who amass the wealth and they do nothing with it. And again, greed does that to a person. Where a person is amassing the wealth, الذي جمع مالا وعدد يحسب أن ماله أخلد. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this person gathers the wealth and then he keeps counting it. You know, he's counting it every day. He's checking his balances and he's getting happy, but it's sitting there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that not only that, but he thinks that his wealth is going to make him immortal. He thinks that because of this wealth, I'm not going to die. Right? This wealth is going to keep me alive. Again, this could mean that he thinks that death is not going to come to him or he's so engrossed in acquiring this wealth that he's negligent of death. Yes. And that is the vicious cycle of this world. That is the vicious cycle of this world. And that is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if the son of Adam has a valley of gold, he'll desire for a second. So a valley of gold is also not enough, right? Because again, Tamar, it's not saturated. There's no way to fill that void. No matter how much you give, it's never going to be enough for that person. The Prophet Ali sallallahu wa sallam said, وَلَنْ يَمْلَأَفَاهُ إِلَّا التُّرَابِ The only thing that will fill the hunger of this person is the dust that a person will get in his grave. But Allah will forgive the person that makes tawbah. So number one, we make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, we make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah, there's instances, there has been times in my life when my greed got the better of me. Right? It got the better of my conscience. It got the better of my reasoning. It got the better of my emotions. And I made decisions at that time based on this greed which was not in the interest of my deen. It was not in the interest of the deen of my family. It was not in the interest of my connection to you, Allah. If anything, it ruined my connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second thing is the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. I want to share this hadith and I'm going to finish with this. But Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, this is an amazing hadith. This is an amazing dua of Mu'az radiallahu anhu. And I really encourage everyone, inshallah, let us learn this dua. It's, it's a short dua. Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to make this dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min tam'in yahdi ila tab'in. It's an amazing dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min tam'in yahdi ila tab'in. Wallah, I seek your protection from such greed that makes its way to my character. It makes its way to my character. There's so much greed that now I'm blinded by this greed. So now lying, it becomes normal. Frauding, it becomes normal. Bad character as a result of this greed, it becomes normal. A person, he changes his whole character because he's so consumed and overcome by this greed. That's the first thing. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min tam'in yahdi ila tab'in. This is the first thing. The second thing he said, wa min tam'in yahdi ila ghayri matma'a. And oh Allah, I seek your protection from such greed that leads me to a place which I don't anticipate. I don't want to come to that place. Where does greed take a person? It takes the person to the wrong places. It takes the person to such a point where there's no turning back sometimes. Because why? Because of the greed and being consumed by greed, a person has severed all his relationships. A person couldn't see in the rage of that moment that what I'm doing is wrong and there's no, there's, there's no turning back sometimes. So it takes a person to a point where they didn't desire to come to that point, but that is where greed takes the point. That uh, person, that is the second thing. And the, sec and the third thing he said, عنه, 
ومن طمع حيث لا طمع and wallah i ask you protection from greed in those things that i shouldn't be greedy for wallah i ask you protection from greed in those things that i shouldn't be greedy for as a person becomes older nabi ali salatu wassalam said in the hadith that yashibu ibn adam yashibu ibn adam wa yashibu fihi ithnan as a person becomes older the greed of two things grow within this person the greed of a longer life and the greed of wealth so as a person becomes older the person is becoming more and more greedy for the wealth rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam muadh radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said that wallah i ask you protection from greed in those things that i shouldn't be greedy for what should a person be greedy for for the rahma of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala walladhi atma'u an yaghfira li khati'ati yawm ad-din this is the dua of ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam that wallah i am hopeful that you will forgive me khati'ati yawm ad-din be hopeful and greedy for the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tama' that leads us to the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and protect us from tama' and greed that leads us to the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallillahum wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive those people that have passed away and grant them maghfirah. Especially our brothers and sisters, those that are suffering, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove their pain and their suffering. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower them and us in the whole of Nabi Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with blessings, with barakat. Ameen. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallillahu wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Hayya ala salah. Hayya ala salah. Hayya ala al-falah. Hayya ala al-falah. الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي كفل رزاق الأنام وفصل أنفعها بحلال وأضرها بحرام وهو العليم بمصالح الأحكام ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ذو الجلال والكرام ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله المبعوث إلى كافة الأنام صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه الكرام أما بعد فيا معشر الإخوان إن من آداب المعاشرة الإسلامية تهذيب النوم واليقظة والبطنان فاعلموا أن كل ما, أن كل ما حرم الله ورسوله فهو حرام فكلوا ما عداه واتبعوا سنن سيد الأنام عليه الصلاة والسلام في النوم واليقظة والشرب وقل الطعام فمنها الوضوء قبل الطعام وبعده والأكل مجتمعا بالمسملة والأكل جالسا باليمين وفي الشرب كذا وأن لا يأكل متكئا ولعوق العصاب بعد الطعام ومن سنن النوم أن لا ينام قبل العشاء ولا يسمر بعد العشاء وعن أبي برزة رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يكره النوم قبل العشاء والحديث بعدها أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الناس كلوا مما في الأرض حلالا طيبا ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم استغفروا الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فانه لا يضر الا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية والمعافاة الدائمة في الدنيا والآخرة 
اللهم استر عوراتنا وامن روعاتنا واحفظنا من بين ايدينا ومن خلفنا وعن يميننا وعن شمائلنا ونعوذ بك اللهم من ان نغتال من تحتنا رضينا بالله ربا وبالاسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رسولا ونبيا عباد الله رحمكم الله اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ان الله يأمر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العلي الذي يذكركم ودعوه يستجيب لكم ولا ذكر الله اكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قيموا الصفوف للصلاه الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاه حي على الصلاه حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاه قد قامت الصلاه الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله الله اكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين واذ قال موسى لفتاه لا ابرح حتى ابلغ مجمع البحرين او امضي حقبا فلما بلغا مجمع بينهما نسيا حوتهما فاتخذ سبيله في البحر سربا فلما جاوزا قال لفتاه اتنا غداءنا لقد لقينا من سفرنا هذا نصبا قال ارايت اذ اوينا الى الصخره فاني نسيت الحوت وما انسانيه الا الشيطان ان اذكره واتخذ سبيله في البحر عجبا قال ذلك ما كنا نبغ فارتدا على اثارهما قصصا فوجدا عبدا من عبادنا اتيناه رحمه من عندنا وعلمناه من لدنا علما قال له موسى هل اتبعك على ان تعلمني مما علمت رشدا قال انك لن تستطيع معي صبرا وكيف تصبر على ما لم تحط به خبرا قال ستجدني ان شاء الله صابرا ولا اعصي لك امرا قال فان اتبعتني فلا تسالني عن شيء حتى احدث لك منه ذكرا سمع الله لمن حميده الله اكبر الله اكبر الله 
الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين فانطلقا حتى إذا ركبا في السفينة خرقها قال أخرقتها لتغرق أهلها لقد جئت شيئا إمرا قال ألم أقل إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا قال لا تؤاخذني بما نسيت ولا ترهقني من أمري عسرا فانطلقا حتى إذا لقيا غلاما فقتله قال أقتلت نفسا زكية بغير نفس لقد جئت شيئا نكرا قال ألم أقل لك إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا قال إن سألتك عن شيء بعدها فلا تصاحبني قد بلغت من لدني عذرا فانطلقا حتى إذا أتيا أهل قرية استطعما أهلها فأبوا أن يضيفوهما أن يضيفوهما فوجدا فيها جدارا يريد أن ينقض فأقامه قال لو شئت لاتخذت عليه أجرا قال هذا فراق بيني وبينك سأنبئك بتأويل ما لم تستطع عليه صبرا سمع الله لمن حميده الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله